things. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our first AMA of the year. Uh, we're going to be talking about a few different things today. We're going to do a little recap of current status and some exciting stuff that's going on. Uh, we're going to talk about liquidity, the concept of liquidity, how it works in the stock market versus the crypto market. Um, how it can benefit you, providing liquidity can benefit you and the project. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, yield farming, which is which is an extension of providing liquidity. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about the next steps for Soku. So a little recap of uh, some things that Soku Swap posted already in the Telegram. Uh, the influencer NFTs will be launched in a couple of weeks. Uh, they're finalizing some of the technicalities to allow uh, people to use debit cards to purchase, to, to use Soku to purchase the NFTs. Um, some of the partnerships that we've been working on for a long time are starting to come to fruition. Looks like it might be happening relatively soon. There's some large brands that are going to bring in a lot of eyes. That's free marketing. When you have partnerships with uh, companies that already have big following, um, as as he mentioned, there's already over 40 sets of NFTs for them as of now, and each set will have a set sold for Soku, with Soku as the currency. Uh, a large marketing campaign is going to happen soon, once everything is is ready to go. And there's also been talks with centralized exchanges. So we're looking at the end of May or beginning of June to get some centralized exchange listings, which will obviously bring more eyes to the project, uh, more traffic, more volume, more arbitrage opportunities, and uh, all very exciting stuff for, for Soku. That said, uh, we want to talk about liquidity. It's extremely important. I think some some of you understand it. Uh, some of you might have some understanding of it. Some of you don't. We might talk about some stuff that some of you know, and you might learn something. Uh, I know I certainly have talking to Soku Swapper about it, and uh, he's going to be sharing some of that uh, knowledge with us today. So I'm going to start out with the stock market, how the stock market works. In the stock market, you have venture capital firms that provide various rounds of investment to a pre-IPO company that's planning to go public. And those, uh, those venture capital firms uh, basically get stock at fractions of the price that the stock will be listed for initially during the IPO, a large amount of it. They also help facilitate the IPO they also, once it's launched, help to market the stock. Oftentimes, these are Wall Street firms like Goldman Sachs and Merrill Lynch and firms like that. They're holding a huge bag of, of stock. Ultimately, their goal is to offload that bag for the highest average price possible. So with that comes not only the motivation, but also responsibility to provide liquidity for that stock. So when you have a stock that is like actively traded, uh, very actively traded, you have a lot of organic liquidity in the form of investors and traders constantly buying and selling it. You have an order book of limit orders and stop orders, et cetera, uh, that, that, is, that is transparent, which is something you don't have in DeFi. Uh, that that market maker that that entity that is holding a huge bag of a certain stock it's in their best interest to maintain the value of it so as people are buying it and the price is going up they're selling it but when people are selling it they're also buying it back if there are not enough sellers because they don't want the price to tank because they want the perceived value of the asset that they're holding a, a huge amount of to, uh, to to keep going up. And this ties into the analysts who are making recommendations, 
who are uh, you know raiding stocks. It ties into the news cycle and stuff like that. So they're they're constantly buying and selling it themselves. They're making money off the spread. They're trying to push the stock price up. They're trying to support it, but their goal is to, over time, be reducing the amount that they're holding until they get to where they have less and less of it, and that sort of marks the end of a of a of a stock market of a major rally of a major bull market where suddenly they no longer have so much motivation to keep promoting and pushing the stock or supporting its price they let the price tank then they start scooping it up cheap and the whole cycle continues over and over again this is completely different than how things work in defi <coughs> excuse me in defi you don't have a market maker per se. You don't have that that entity. You have an AMM, an automated market maker, that is software driven, and is whose role it is to always provide uh, liquidity for a crypto asset, so that when somebody goes to buy it, there are tokens available to buy. When somebody goes to sell it, there's somebody there to sell it. The AMM does. Uh, does make money off of the spread. AMMs do make money off the spread, but the the role is to take the liquidity pool and use that to provide liquidity for the asset. Where does that liquidity pool come from? Well, there can be an initial liquidity pool that's provided by the project, but ultimately it's provided in DeFi by investors, investors like you and me. And how do we do that? We do that by creating LP tokens. The higher the liquidity, the more stable the price. If the AMM doesn't have a big liquidity pool to work with, it has to adjust the price according to the, 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 the transaction size uh, accordingly, because it can never run out of tokens to sell. And, um, and, and so to do that, it's it's adjusting the price and that's where price impact comes in so the bigger the liquidity pool the less the price impact will be on a buy and a sell so a lower liquidity early in the game uh, can be instrumental in helping the price rise quickly but at the same time <coughs> sorry guys just getting over cold here uh, at the same time low liquidity makes for bigger dumps when somebody decides to sell. So, so ultimately, we always want the liquidity pool to grow as the stock price grows and as the, I mean, sorry, not stock, the uh, token price grows and as the project is gaining momentum. So this is something that um, a lot of people are kind of stuck in this mentality of buy low, sell high. But in DeFi, there's a lot more to it than that. And there's a much better way. And again, this is this is not financial advice. This is just explaining how things work. Uh, better way to play the game. At this point, we are all early. And it has nothing to do with when a project was launched. It has a lot to do with, with development and where we are in terms of, um, of liquidity and stuff like that. We need to understand that as investors, all of us are are on the same team. And if we all play the game intelligently, we can all win. And a big part of that is providing some liquidity with some of your tokens. Uh, I'm going to uh, cut to Soku Swapper here, who's going to explain uh, stuff in more detail. And then we can come back if anybody has any questions. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks for that. So, um, what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm just explaining how how the two types of um, the two types of uh, trades that we do and the two types of systems in cryptocurrency and DeFi. So, um, one most of you guys are probably familiar with, but I'm still gonna explain it anyways, just to be safe because I'm not sure there's a lot of people out there that don't understand. So first thing you have is an order book, right? You've seen them before, you see it, you know, any centralized exchange. There's a whole bunch of numbers up here. They got prices over here. 
and then you got your market right here and then you got more right here underneath okay and what that is is it's a bunch of buy orders and it's a bunch of sell orders which means that say someone like me i say i want to buy this right let's say bitcoin i want to buy bitcoin for ten thousand dollars right wish we could right but anyways so i'll say i want to i want to buy uh 10 bitcoin for ten thousand dollars right um if someone is now selling five bitcoin for ten thousand dollars my trade and their trade are going to connect right and then now i'm going to get five of the bitcoin that i want and they're going to sell their bitcoin okay or if they were selling 15 per se um, and i'm buying 10 then i'm going to get that 10 and then they're still going to have five for sale okay um or there's another thing called fill and kill that pretty much means the whole thing gets filled or it gets killed okay uh but you don't see that too often in this most of the time is whatever's there goes okay um so so, so that one thing limit orders um or, or uh, market orders is pretty much just saying whatever the market price is right now i'm buying it right now from some liquidity that's on the exchange the exchange has ready okay um and that 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 market that market price is pretty much the the price of the last transaction that's happened okay all um, right so just want to go over that real quick so the next thing is um amm i'm sorry does someone have a question okay sorry uh so the next one is uh an amm an automated market maker okay so hey guys if you could please uh mute your microphones while, while he's talking and then we can open the floor for questions what do you think what can I am I from CircuitSwap? You have a question? You, right. know, you can please mute your microphone for now. We'd appreciate it. Um, so, um, so, what was I saying? Okay, now we're going to explain automated market maker. So, uh, they work with liquidity pools. So there's no order book, it's a liquidity pool. So the way I like to explain it is, uh, let's use dollars and euros, right? Let's just say, for instance, one USD equals one euro, okay? Just to keep it simple. So when, when, when you're providing liquidity, you're pretty much providing an equal value of two different currencies. And I like to say, like, you're kind of putting on a table, right? So here's a table. Okay, so say I put on 10 USD and 10 Euro, right? Put USD up here. Damn, right. Can you guys see? My marker's dying. Your, your pen's kind of, looks like your pen's running dry. Fuck. And another marker. Okay, you guys might have to give me a second. Uh, Orga, take back over on what you were talking about. Let me go grab another marker, uh, no worries. and I'll be right back to talk about it. Okay, this so so me. while he's Sorry. doing that, yeah, what I what I want to emphasize is um, that we we all have to operate under the assumption that we're about to experience a lot of growth uh, with with everything that that's that's coming online. Uh, we we should be able to anticipate steady growth in the price, um, quite, a, quite a bit of a pump. It's what we all want. It's what we're all hoping for and everything's in place to make that possible. During that time, of course, there are people who are gonna wanna take profit. Uh, what, what we wanna emphasize is that there is a smarter way to do that than simply selling on the charts. And that is by creating LP tokens. So, and, and, and of course you can always stake those in a yield farm, but even if you don't, you are providing liquidity. That does that does go into the AMM and go, goes into the liquidity pool that the AMM uses. So when you do that and the price goes up, let's say the price of, of both Ethereum and Soku rise, well, maybe could be disproportionately, let's say the price of Soku is 
percentage-wise rising faster than the price of Ethereum, your LP tokens will be increasing in, in overall yes. value, but the percentage <clears throat> the percentage of tokens that are in those LP tokens will change. So in essence, you are selling Soku uh, as the, the price of Soku rises proportional to the rise that's called like you know there's impermanent loss impermanent gain that's impermanent loss of tokens which is a weird term because that implies that you're you're losing something you're not losing money you're changing the proportion of tokens in your lp uh, in your lp tokens in other words you'd be uh gaining ethereum while the amount of soku in your lp tokens is is essentially decreasing and when you're doing that you're not hurting the price of soku in any way you're actually helping it versus like selling it on the charts. So if, if everybody can understand that and and we can work together as a team in that goal, uh, then we all can can come out ahead and do better than if we are all operating as islands and kind of just throwing stuff on the charts willy nilly when we feel like, oh, there's been a pump or something like that. Um, so we're, we're early enough and we're a small enough group here that, uh, we, we hope that's possible. And, and this is something that again, Soka Swapper is, uh, more, more versed in this than me. And, and it's going to explain this in detail. He's explained it to me, kind of blew my mind, to be honest. Uh, I learned a lot. I still feel he's better at explaining it than me. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave that to him as soon as he gets back. Um, uh, in the meantime, uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free. Are you done, Orga? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that, you guys. You guys better one. So, um, what's that plan? One euro Z equals one euro. Do you guys see that? Yep, looks good. Change my view. Okay. Okay. So now here's the table, right? So say you put on ten dollars, right? We put USD over here, euro over here, right? So say you put, I provide liquidity. I'm the first one to put liquidity on. I will put ten dollars. I put ten euro. Okay. Equal value. Okay. These values always have to e equal each other. Always. That's how it works. Okay. So now say I have some dollars, but I want some euro. Okay. So I want, I want two euro. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put $2 on here. Right. I'm going to go ahead and take $2 off of there. Right. So now we got 12 USD and we have eight euro. Okay. And that's how the price changes. Okay. So it went from one to one to this would be now three to two. You guys follow? The total value remains the same. So 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 
the ratio is always the same. This side has to equal this. Okay. So now what that means is, is that, uh, one dollar, one dollar, say it would be, a uh, would that be, uh, uh, three over one divided by two over one or one over two by, my brain's going messed up, but let's say 10 and 10, um, roughly now, uh, Let's just say this one went down. This would let's say the US dollar stayed the same, right? And the, the euro just went down now to uh two thirds, which would be 66. Right? So so that's how that works. Okay. Now technically, I don't, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible without getting too too confusing though. But technically the dollar would go up a little bit and the euro would come down a little bit. Okay. Unless one has a lot more liquidity. So now if the US dollar had a billion dollars worth of, or $10 billion worth of liquidity out there, and the euro only had a million dollars of liquidity, right? Then this would absolutely hold true. And that would stay roughly at one, and this would drop down to about 66, okay? It would be about two thirds, okay? So just wanna show that. Now that's showing you with a small amount of liquidity. Now let's bump that number up to a million, right? Uh, well, let's, let's do a, let's do something a little easier. Not so many digits. Let's do 10,000. Okay. So now we put 10,000 of each. Now I come by, I want two euro. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add two, two dollars and I'm going to take two euro off the table. Okay. Now what happens, this is 10,002 to 9,998, okay? So now I just did the same exact transaction. I traded $2 for two, two euro, okay? But you can see now that they're still pretty much the same, okay? 10,002 and 998 is almost equal, okay? Now, now, now it's not exactly, it's not 100% equal, but you can see what I'm saying, right? Um, the the ratio doesn't change that dramatically, okay? And this is why higher liquidity is better when you want a price to be more stable, okay? Because it takes more money to move the price up or down, okay? When there's lower liquidity, it's a lot easier to raise the price up or down because you're, you're taking a bigger percentage of what's in the liquidity pool at the time, okay? And this is the biggest thing that we're trying to explain is that um, when, as we start growing, um, right now the 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 LP, the liquidity level, it is is low, but not too low, but not too high. To be honest, I think it's kind of perfect. Uh, but as we grow, we want to grow that liquidity because we want the price to be more stable as the price goes up, right? Because you don't want to just shoot up. I'm not saying I'm showing up. We're, we're not saying anything about prices going up or down or any of that, right? This is just hypothetical, educational, okay? But if we were to go up really fast, we would not want to come down really fast because people are like, oh, shit, let me take some profit. Let me sell, okay? So here's where liquidity comes into, and this is where what people under, need to understand. So if you put in, right? Uh, to say I was that one that put in that 10,000. I put in 10,000 USD and I put in 10,000 Euro, right? Now let's say someone wanted uh, uh, 1,000 Euro, right? So they put in 1,000 USD, okay? And of course these numbers aren't gonna be exactly right because that's where the algorithm comes in and it figures out that ratio and that's what kicks out that number, okay? But let's just say for this instance, the price is pretty much staying the same. Okay. So we're coming out with now um, 9,000. Right. Um, oh, sorry. Oh. This is now, uh, this was plus and this was minus, right? So now, oh no. Right. 
So minus 1,000 and plus 1,000. So now this one over here has 11,000 and this one over here has 9,000. So now when you remove your liquidity, this is what you're going to receive, right? You're not going to receive what you put in. You're going to receive what's left after the AMM has been doing its thing and using your liquidity for people to buy and sell against. Okay. So what this does is, is it allows the AMM to sell your tokens for you. And this is what a lot of people, I think, just don't grasp, right? A lot of people think that whatever you put in is what you're going to get out. No, what you're doing is you're putting your tokens on so people can trade. You're putting, you're putting your tokens on the table so people can trade against it. Okay. Um, so as we're going up, if people sell their tokens against the DEX, the price goes down. Most people understand that people buy price goes up. People sell price goes down. Correct. I think everybody gets that. What people don't understand is that if you want to sell your tokens, what you can do is you can add them to the pool. Okay. So now let's say there was already 10,000 tokens of each, right? Still starting off at that point, but it's easy to use. Okay. Um, so you said, I want to, I want to go ahead and put 5,000 tokens up for sale. Okay. So what you would do is say, I want to put 5,000 USD up for sale. What you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and add those 5,000 USD and you're going to add 5,000 euro. Okay. And now if people come and they start buying the USD, right? What's going to happen is now let's say people come and buy 3,000, right? People, uh, what is the number three would be, uh, one bit. That'd be perfect. Okay. So let's say people come and buy 3,000. So there was 15,000 now. There's 15,000 over here now, right? So now someone wants to come and buy 3,000 USD. So now again, I'm keeping these numbers real simple, right? And now there's going to be 18,000 euro. Okay. So what happened was, is uh, those 3,000 just got traded on the AML. Okay. They got traded on the DEX using the 10,000 liquidity that you put in or they put in and the 5,000 that you put in. Okay. So now when you take your tokens out, okay. Because we just went from uh, 15 to 12, that's one fifth, right? So technically you're now pulling out one fifth or, 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 or four fifths of that 5,000. So you're now pulling out 4,000 USD, get it? You just let this thing sell and now you're pulling out 6,000 euro, okay? And, and again, I'm just keeping this straight that assuming that as we're buying and selling the price is staying the same just for ease of explaining okay but we all know as people buy and sell the one that's buying is going up the one that's selling is going down okay every time someone buys soku with eth technically eth goes down in value okay just doesn't move as much because there's tons of liquidity out there and there's tons of arbitrage okay um soku moves more just because there's less liquidity and there's less arbitrage okay so, but what happens is this, you just now did exactly what you wanted to do without having to sell against the decks. You let the decks do the work for you. Okay. And now here, 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 here's where we get into the numbers, the value. Okay. So let's say that, uh, uh, I think some numbers are easy to use. Uh, Let's say you have 10 USD and you have 10 Euro. Okay. And each one's a hundred dollars. So let's say now, uh, USD equals 100 Euro equals 100, right? So you're going to put 10 in that's 1000. Move that up a little bit. Can you guys still see everything good? Looks good. Okay. Just want to make sure. Um, so now 
if you said, I want to, uh, or we're, we're, we're going to say there's a thousand USD in here right now, and there's a thousand euro in the pool right now. Okay. Um, Um, oh. Okay, so now say you wanted to sell, uh, let's say you want to sell five USD. Okay, or, or let's do it, let's do it like this. Let's make it a little easier now. Okay, and that way we can relate to our product a little bit. Okay. And we're just going to say, for ease of ex explanation, right, that SoCo is $100 and Ether is $100, okay? So right now, there's 10 SoCo in the, in the pot and there's 10 ETH in the pot, okay? Now, you want to sell five, you want to sell five SoCo, okay? Um, Let's say you want to sell, let's say you want to sell two soku. Let's keep this simple. Let's say you want to sell two soku. So what you're going to do is you're going to sell against that thousand. So now you're now bringing this down. This was a uh, 10 equals, and now it's eight equals, uh, oh, it's not right though. Um, eight, and then that was 10. Um, I think I'm getting a little confused now. So, and I don't think I can explain that like this with the numbers. So, I apologize, yes. I'm not really good at this. Uh, sometimes I am I'm not really good on trying to explain on stage. Um, oh, you know what? Here, actually, let's let's do it more like this. This is more realistic. Um, so um, there is roughly one ETH in here. This is going to be easier to explain. This is how I got to do it. So there's one ETH in here right now, right? And it's $1,000. So Toku equals 100, ETH equals 1,000, right? Um, we already know the liquidity of Soku is not a lot. Nothing compared to what ETH is, right? ETH is the second, second largest uh, token on the blockchain, okay? So way more liquidity for ETH than there is for Soku. Which means that most of the buys and sells for SoCo against ETH is not going to affect the ETH price a lot. It will affect SoCo price a lot more. Okay. Yeah. So now let's say we just sold, uh, you sold two SoCo, right? Oh, sorry. So if you sold two SoCo, there's now 12 in here, right? And now there's, this went down a little bit. So uh, this is um, it went down ten percent. So let's say uh it is point nine. Okay. So the, the value is changing now, okay? So the ratio is changing. So now it's instead of 10 to one, it's 12 to 0.9, okay? And I'm trying to do this roughly as good as I can. I'm probably getting a little too technical. Uh, it's probably confusing me. I'm confusing you guys a little bit. Uh, if anybody has any questions, make sure to ask, ask, because I like the reason that we're doing this is to try to really explain to you guys so you could understand, okay? I think what uh, comes into play is that the, the total value of your LP tokens change as as the price of either token increases right so yeah but, but, but hold, on, hold on don't worry about lp don't worry about lp price people get too consumed on what the price of lp is 
don't don't worry about that price okay what you need to understand is um what is the soku value now and how much soku do you have and what is the eth value and how much eth do you have okay don't worry about lp value too, too many people i hear talk about lp and i i i, I understand that people just want their lp value to go up because they're on lp but the real thing that you need to understand is how much soku do you have in the pool and how much eth do you have in the pool and how much are those two worth okay that's the real number that people need to understand and most people don't okay so let me just say this if you did this you just you just change the number here by 20 percent, which means that now soku is now worth about 80 dollars okay because you just changed the number here by 10 percent You know, or sorry, twenty percent. You get it. So if you change the that, or you change the number of the tokens in the pool, then you're roughly going to change the value by roughly that amount. Okay, that's where the algorithm comes in a little bit, and it takes into calculation um, the the pool, and then also too the value of the other token. So it gets a little bit more confusing than that, but I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. Okay, so. In this instance, would you rather now sell your two Soku, okay, for $100 each, or would you rather sell your two Soku for $80 each? Because now they were 100 but you just sold those, and you only got 160 now, right? Because you just sold against the liquidity pool, lowering the price. Because what happens? Every time you sell tokens, the price goes down if you're selling on... AMM, especially on order book, not as much. Okay, it does lower the price a little bit when you sell. If you're selling for lower than the market value, if you're selling for higher than the market value, then when you sell, the price actually goes up. You get it? AMMs are are good and bad, to be honest. There's pros and cons. Uh, with that you really need to understand how they work if you don't you you just you'll never get it right like i'll, I'll use an example um safe moon safe moon people loved it because you put you, you bought this token there, there was a tax on it and it added to the liquidity right but then it got to a point where there was so much liquidity that the price would never move up or down. You could buy a ton, you could sell a ton, the price is never gonna move. And what happened was they got to such a high liquidity level with such a low price, but it was irreversible because of the way they had set up the token, right? And most people just don't get that. The thing about us is we control the liquidity. Well, you guys mostly, right? We can put in two, but it's better if you guys do it because if we're the ones that control the liquidity, then technically we have the power to do what they call rug proof, right? And that's crap, you know? Like, all those people should be locked up. Uh, no one should ever be able to say, like, you can buy this, but you can't sell it now. Like, you're a fucking fraud and you should be shot, okay? Uh, we say, you guys have the power, but now we're trying to educate you a little bit more so you can really have the power and not make stupid moves, okay? I'm not saying anybody, any of you guys are stupid, you know? We all do things for whatever reason, right? And if you guys got to sell your tokens, sell them. Like, I'm not going to tell you not to sell your tokens. If you got to sell them, sell them. I'm just trying to explain to you why it's better if you provide liquidity, okay? So we already understand this, right? Each token start off, each token start off at $100, right? There were 10 token in there for a thousand bucks. But now because you just added two more, you added 20% more, Okay, then that price roughly dropped by 20%. Okay. So as the price is going up, do you want to sell and do you want to sell for less and lower the price? Or do you want to sell for more than what it's worth? Okay. And that's if you sell and you put your tokens in liquidity, that's what you're doing. Okay. So now let me show you liquidity. Uh Okay, so again, we're going to start with the 10 Soku 
have one day. Does anybody have any questions? I see like a couple little things in the chat thing, but I can't see the there. Does anybody have any questions yet? If you do, let me know. Okay. So we're gonna go back to this, right? Start again. Soku's at a hundred, ETH is at a thousand, right? There's one ETH in the pool, there's 10 Soku in the pool. Okay. Now, if the price is going up, which means people are buying, right? So when people are buying NFTs and they're using Soku, that means people have to buy the Soku first to buy the NFT, right? So that automatically means that if they're buying on the AMM and they're using the debit card, the price is going to go up, okay? It's just how it works. I'm not saying the price is going up. I'm just explaining the mechanics behind it, okay? Follow? So now, if the price is going up, okay, um, and you're adding value, okay? So now you're like, I want to sell two Soku. So what you're going to do is you're going to plus, you're going to plus two right here, right? So now there's going to be 12 Soku in here, right? And then over here, you're going to put in roughly uh, 0.2 E. So now there's 1.2 in here, right? Everybody follow along still? So now, say someone comes, like the next person that's buying an NFT, right? They have to come and buy some Soku. Now say that person has to buy two Soku, right? Um, I mean, for, for numbers sake, two out of 12 is gonna be a little hard. Let's say three, just for numbers sake, to keep it easy and keep the decimals out as much as possible. So let's say three. So someone just came and they bought three Soku, okay? And they had to add over here point, point 0.3 ETH, right? So now there is 1.5 ETH, right? And now there's nine Soku, okay? So we went from a, 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 a ratio uh, 10 to one, right? Now we're at a ratio of nine to 1.5, okay? Uh, anybody have a calculator? Can, can, can someone do the math real quick? What's, yeah. uh, uh, oh, oh. Mm. One divided by ten. What's one divided by ten? 0.1. 0.1, right? So that's what this was pretty much. So the so before was 0.1 E, right? So we'll say uh, each value was 0.1, right? Do we agree on that? At 100 to 1,000, it was 0.1. Just trying to make sure I'm doing my decisions the correct way. Uh, so now, can somebody divide 1.5 divide uh, divide by nine? That's uh, 0.16666. Okay. Point one six 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 six. Okay. So now, what just happened? You just sold some of your tokens, and the price just went up by what? Two thirds. Correct. We all following along. The price just went up two thirds. Yeah. So now instead of selling those two Soku, okay, and lowering down the price by 20%, you just sold, uh, so you didn't sell all your Soku. Let's just, let's just show real quick, okay? Because there was uh, 12, and we sold three. So technically you just sold 25% of what you had, right? So you had two, right? These are your two. 
times uh, 0.75, you now have in the pool, you now have 1.58 or 1.5 soku. Sorry. So it didn't sell your soku yet. Okay. So the, all it did was sell uh, uh, 25%. There was 12 soku in the pool. It just sold one quarter. It sold three, right? So you're going to subtract 25% from two, which brings you to 1.5. So what you did was you just sold 0.5 E or 0.5 Soku, half a Soku for uh, 0.166 E. Okay? Versus the other way where you sold it for less. Is everybody following along? If you sell against the DEX, the value comes down. If you add liquidity and let the DEX sell for you, you're selling as people are buying, right? You're letting the DEX sell your tokens. Every time a new buyer comes in and the price goes up, you're selling for more and more and more and more and more. But we did that again. And you're not having to pay gas fees on every transaction. Exactly. 100%. That's a good one to add. I didn't even think about that. Good call. Uh, so let's say again, right? So now, let's say someone came in and bought another three soap. Okay? So another minus three. So we're down to six now, right? I'm going to put that six over here. Uh, let's just say, for instance, keep it simple again. Uh, we're going to add another... Um, well, at this point, it would be... Uh, uh, three would be, uh, so it'd be a uh, one third. So it'd be now 0.5. So you have to add 0.5 over here now. Okay. So, uh, like I said, it's nine to 1.5. So three would be one third of this. So one third of 1.5 is 0.5. Okay. So now over here, there's two E, right? And now over here, there's six. So now we're six to two. Right? So what's two divided by six? Can somebody give me the two, two divided by six? That point three three? Yep, you got it. Point three three eight. Right? So now you just sold point five of your soku for uh uh, at a value, okay, of 1.66, okay? Uh, so we're not going to say equal, but we're going to say, uh, 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 let's say at, right? 0.1666, right? And then you just sold another 0.5 at 2. You get it? The price keeps going up and you keep selling your tokens. You're taking value as the price is going up. You're not hurting the value. You're helping the value. You're helping to make the liquidity pool bigger, which helps to support the price. And you're making money every time someone buys so. Okay. And in addition to that, also, I mean, not, not even just discounting the fact that you can stake your LP tokens in the yield farm and get extra rewards for large LP provider fees. You're also, it's also acting as a form of insurance. It's kind of a buffer against fluctuations. So you know, if, the, if the price of Soku is fluctuating until you split your LP tokens, then that, that's where impermanent loss and permanent gain comes into play. And, you know, let's say, let's say somebody does go and like, you know, dump a bunch of Soku on the charts and the price dips temporarily. Well, you, the, the ratio in your LP tokens is going to change to where suddenly there's a lot more Soku in there and a little bit less ETH. And, and, and if you choose, you can always split them strategically at that point, end up with a lot more Soku, then recreate the LP, recreate your LP and continue along the upward trajectory as, as the tokens are gaining value. So it is in a way also a buffer and a form of insurance, I would I would say, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, against uh, some of the volatility that can happen on a token that has lower liquidity. You know, 
let's talk about liquid uh 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 and permanent loss too because most people do not understand that again like that's another thing that most people talk about i hear people talk about a lot and no one understands 100 percent, right so right here you can see that uh what's happening is when you're providing liquidity the value is going up right but you're losing so good, right you're losing some the value is going up but you're losing some okay so now let's say if you had uh a million soku right so you have a million soku and, and you're like oh well this makes sense i'm gonna put it all into liquidity okay now right now our price is at what is it like point zero zero two right something like that um uh, now the price let's say for instance the price goes to two cents right so that times 10 right 10x it's going to go to point oh two okay now if you put all your your tokens in here um you might make some money off of uh the ethereum going up in value um because it doesn't matter what we do it doesn't matter how much soku we have at this point anyways we're not going to really mess with the prices of, uh, of ethereum okay not 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 for a little while I, I i i'd be i'd be lying through my teeth if i said oh yeah you know we're going to start affecting the price of ethereum so no there's just too big and there's way too much volume on it like the amount of ethereum that gets gets spent in gas every day is astronomical okay so um ETH might still go up in value, right? While you have it in here. Toku could go up in value while you have it in here. Okay. So both could go up in value. The problem is that you're going to be selling some Soku. Okay. As people are buying Soku and the price is going up, then you're going to be losing some. So let's say you put a million in, right? And half the liquidity pool got bought, right? It might have went up in value, but now you only have 500K. Okay, so now you only got 500k at two cents. Uh, so now what is that? Uh, what's 500,000 times 0 0.02? Was that 50k, 5k, 10k? Yeah, 10k. Okay, so let's uh, so here you're gonna have 10k. Okay, first is if you held the whole thing, right. You'd have twenty k, right? And that's that's the difference. Okay, that's what what where impermanent loss comes from. What it's saying is that the value of the the token could change, and and, and the 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 value that you're 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 trading for for um, liquidity fees. Um, now also uh, yield farming, uh, 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 revenue, right? And when I say liquidity fees, I'm not saying fees that come out of your money, fees that go into your money, right? The fees that the AMM charges and puts into the liquidity pool and pays the liquidity providers. A lot of people, I don't think, still understand that. Like just by providing liquidity, you get fees off of everything, right? So, but this is this is what impermanent loss is all about, right? They're just saying. Do you want to take all your tokens and put it into the liquidity pool and have it have it work for you? Or do you want to hold on to some on the side because you think the value is going to skyrocket, right? So uh, that's why I say when people are ready to start selling at a certain point, they say, hey, I like this level. I want to sell a percentage of mine, right? I personally, okay, I'm not going to tell you guys what to do, but I personally would add it to the pool versus selling. And I'm gonna let the pool sell it because it's going to sell at a higher price every time there's another buy versus just selling and lowering the price. Yeah, yeah. so I, I think like the, the, the main point that I that I got is that basically like we talked about this, lower liquidity makes for more volatility it makes for the potential for the, the the token to increase in value more rapidly but it also uh makes for potential for it to drop more rapidly so 
for me, like a smart strategy is not to put all of, of my tokens into LP right now, right? Because, but to put some. And as the price increases, to keep adding more and more LP, right? Instead of thinking like, I'm gonna wait for it to go up and I'm just gonna sell it. Which you, as the price is going up, you, you want increasingly more liquidity to help support that price. So when one dude decides, oh, I'm gonna sell some, it doesn't just dump it right back down, right? Because you're vested in this, you're vested in this, this token and you wanna see sustained growth. You don't wanna see like, a huge spike and a huge dump and you're like, ah, oh, crap, you know, I was eating lunch and I missed it. You don't want to see that. You want to see sustained growth. So the way that we can achieve that is, you know, the more people who, who, who do, who use this strategy of starting out with a little bit of their bag in LP and then as the price is growing, keep adding more LP, we're protecting those gains and we're protecting that chart from dumps, right? So, so we're all working together to, to to support it as it's going up, and as it's going up, that LP that the the AMM is selling some of our Soku that we have LP in LP at increasingly higher and higher prices, right? And that's, in a way, that's kind of like analogous to what I was talking about in the stock market with market makers, like somebody who has a really big bag. They can't just go, oh, the price of, you know, whatever Apple stock just, you know, just jumped up. I'm going to dump it all because they'll just dump the price back down. They're not going to get what their bag is worth, right? They want to be selling it slowly over time. So the beauty of LP and providing liquidity is that you are, your, your, your goal ultimately is over time to sell at the highest average price. And so you're you're letting the AMM do that while at the same time supporting that, that increase that increase in price over time and protecting it from dumps. That's that's what I get out of this. Hundred percent, I agree with that. Thank you. Oh, and, and 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 exactly like what you're saying, like whales, like big investors, uh, they understand that that they have power over a. Uh, 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 investment okay and they're they're most whales they got to be whales and they 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 um got to the point in life because they're intelligent okay they're, they're not dumb they don't make dumb decisions um i'll tell you um we have some whales billionaires that are ready to jump in soku they love what we built but they're like ryan you got to get the volume up Right. Um, once you get the volume up, they want at least a million dollars in volume. Um, um, they normally want three to six months, but they're like, show us a month, maybe two. Like, let, let's just see that you're good. I don't know if you guys remember, but we had a, a sandwich trade that came in. and people complain about sandwich trades, but they help in a, in a way too that a lot of people don't see because a lot of people see just like, they're they're very um, you know tunnel vision, right? They don't see big picture. Um, but there was a there was a there was a a sandwich trade that came in one day, and it bought one hundred seven thousand dollars worth of of soku, okay, and then dumped it right after. It shot the price to um, seventy cents for a second, okay, um, and then it came back down. So it showed you there's not a lot of money that needs to go in at our liquidity level. Right, for the price to go up, you could go back in the book and look at it. Um, I remember I posted about it in in one one or two of the groups um, because I want people to understand, right? Like it doesn't take a lot of money for Soku to to be really good for everybody, right? A lot of people play it smart as we start to go up, right? I'm not saying we're gonna go up. I'm not saying we're gonna go down. I'm just saying hypothetically, right? Um, but because of that trade alone, that raised our volume by about almost two hundred twenty thousand dollars that day. All right, just that one bot, that one those that buy and sell. Okay, we only need to get over a million dollars in volume for a little more than thirty days. That's not hard at all, at all. We've had, especially we've had it in the past. We've had million dollar days. 
Yeah, and and, and and we weren't even, we didn't even have use case back then. It was just, it was still just a token. We now have major use case. We're now a major cryptocurrency for a major um, NFT marketplace, right? We're the only NFT marketplace in the world that has an affiliate system like we have. And we haven't even started marketing it yet. But we, we're, we're talking to people and, and, and they're ready to start marketing it. Um, they want to see a couple of things that we're working on right now. And hopefully we'll, I was hoping to have it done this week, but looks like we're probably going to have it done next week. Uh, and they're ready to start jumping on some, some big projects. And the volume is going to come like this. And we're going to be incentivizing people to trade with Soku versus ETH, which is going to bring in more volume. And the sandwich trades are going to happen. But people have to understand, like, you're going to make money too. If Soku goes up, if Soku goes up, people are going to make money. I can say that. I think everybody understands that. If people are holding Soku and the and the price goes up, people are going to make money, right? Um. So the volume is a good thing, right? Even if it's from bots. Now, to like most people have kind of learned already. Now, set your slippage low, right? And and and, and pay a little bit more gas, and you don't have to worry about bot, right? Uh, I, I get people people complain about gas sometimes, and they're like, oh, you know. You know, seven dollars or eight dollars or for a trade is a lot you know i guess sometimes people are used to it because we came from bsc and a lot of people are used to paying 11 cents for gas right i i started trading on ethereum before bsc was around so i'm used to the gas i, I didn't like it when it started going up to like 110 dollars two years ago but that that was getting great that was getting crazy and it's, it's gotten high recently again too you know sometimes there's just a lot of traffic on ethereum um there's there's nft drops that drop and and they have a lot, they have a lot of transactions really, really fast. And it'll go for like a whole day, maybe two. Um, and that's just how Ethereum is. And it's going to get worse, to be honest. There's gonna be more volume and more traffic on Ethereum. It's gonna be a lot more. Um, but I'm hopeful that, uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that the, the upgrades that that, that uh, Vitalik and, and people are working on will help lower the price of gas. We'll see, you know, uh, I can't say anything for sure, but I think it is. I think I think what's going to happen is the prices are going to start coming down for gas. I think there, there's, there are things that are coming that's going to make it a lot better. OK, but the 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 chain is the right chain to be on. 100%. Okay. The volume is going to come in. The Soku buyers are 100% going to come in. And we have a bunch of people that say they're going to do things and sell them for Soku. Okay. We have uh, deals with people that, that are going to come and do things for Soku. And we're also going to do a lot of our influencers. And uh, we have a decent team now. And we're building it every day. Uh, we we slowed down on our influencer marketing because we did it way too prematurely. Um, NFT marketplace was supposed to be done last last July. We were supposed to originally launch July first of last year. <laughs> you can see we're really late. Um, part of the fun about development and and is what it is. But we got it done and and we're here and still not done. We have a bunch of things that we're going to add that nobody else in the industry has um, and we're not going to talk about them until we do them but uh they're going to be pretty cool but i just really want people to understand this um, this is so important and the gas um, fees are all the more reason to to let let the amm sell your tokens for you and you can always yeah. you control how much by you know like i said incrementally as the price you know presumably hopefully goes up as we hope and expect it to that uh that you you then incrementally increase the amount of liquidity you're providing and then you're paying no gas no yeah. and, 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 and and gas is a thing especially when gas is high right but still like 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 this is a big number right here right where, where, where are we at what, what we end up saying um you know we saw like 0.5 at two Right? And point five so cool at uh point one six six 
right? Let's say 166, right? Like that's huge. That's huge because the price started at, at 0.1, right? The price started at 0.1 in, 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 in this model right here. Price started at 0.1 ETH. And instead of selling and and selling at 0.08 ETH, right? Because you would have dropped it 20%. But we were doing two out of 10, remember? Instead of dropping the price and selling it for 0.08, you went from 0.08 to selling at 0.166, which is doubled, right? And then the next one was at 0.2, which is more than double. Two and a half times, right? 2.5 roughly? And and what you um the good point you made uh you made when we were last time we were talking is you know if you look at if you go to Soku Swap and you put in a certain amount of of um of Ethereum or or whatever whatever the currency is that you're swapping for Soku, uh obviously the the bigger the buy, like you will you'll flat out see how many tokens you would get. Uh and if you're you know let's like a hundred bucks versus a thousand bucks versus ten thousand bucks versus fifty thousand bucks uh and and you do the, the quick math on how much you're paying for each token you can you can see how much uh or how little it would take to um really make soku increase in value but uh but the real point is you don't the the next buy that comes in is going to be at a much higher price so if you put in um, you know, say 10,000 bucks, you swap 10,000 bucks worth of Ethereum for Soku and you look at the average price you paid, that the next buy that comes in is going to be quite significantly at a quite significantly higher price than what you just, than, than, than what you just paid. So it's, it's even more of an increase than what you see by doing that little that little test that little calculation of a simulated buy on the on the decks yeah tremendously um i'm gonna look for something real quick um i posted these in the soku swap group a while back let's see if i could find them in here real quick um And on the, and on the on the flip side of you know what what we've been talking about about how letting the AMM sell your tokens as the price increases, uh, your if if the price is you know let's say the price of Ethereum goes way up faster or let's say dip in the price of Soku, then you're essentially buying it back cheaper, which is what everybody's always trying to do. We're always trying to you know. Uh, if we're if we're actively invested in something, and you know we might want to um, buy buy some on dips, and we might want to you know sell some on spikes, but it's really hard for the. I mean, the average no nobody can really effectively do that consistently, right? But when you're when you're using LP, the AMM is literally doing that for you. It's buying it, it's buying low if the price of Soku dips, the amount of Soku that you, you're DCAing, right? If you were to Soku dips and then you split your LP tokens, you're suddenly going to have a whole bunch more Soku that you essentially paid a lower price for. And if the price spikes, it's selling and you split your LP, you're going to have less Soku and you will have sold it at a higher price. So it's it's buying low and selling high for you. And all you have to do is decide strategically when to split and create LP tokens. It's a it's a much easier way than trying to guess, you know, peaks and troughs. Definitely. Okay, okay. Are, are you still going, uh, Orca? Or can I share something real quick? No, I'm good. Go. Okay. Uh, oh wait, maybe it's this one. There we go. Okay, can everybody see this? Yep. Can everybody see, yep. see the picture? Screen. Okay. So here, what is it? 9362L. 
Okay. So here, what I did was um, I did exactly what, what, what Orca's talking about and, and, and did the next step too. So you can see what the next buy is, right? Um, or did I do that on here? Yeah, I did. Okay, so like right here, um, whenever I did these, you guys can go back in the Soku Swap chat and look. Okay, um, the the images are there. But so here, uh, current ETH price was sixteen fifty. Okay. Um, uh, 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 man, I did this a while back. I don't remember what the numbers were. E B. Um, e L. So L is liquidity. Oh, B is bought. Um, oh, okay. EB is Ethereum bought. Ethereum, how much was Ethereum was used to buy? Um, how much? Ethereum. Oh, EL is Ethereum liquidity. Okay. T is total. R is, uh, I believe, remaining Soku. Yeah, liquidity. And then B was, L is liquidity for Soku. B is uh, Soku bot. And R is remaining. Okay. So here, what we did was, I said, what would happen if we did 30 at, at, at when ETH was 1650? Right. So that's roughly $49,500. Okay. So $49,500, just under 50K, bought um, 5.4 million Soku, right? So then what we do is we take the liquidity, um, how much Soku was in the liquidity pool at the time. We remove that 5.4 million, and now we have remaining 3.9 million, right? Um, so then we take the ethereum bot because that was the ethereum that's now going into that pool right and then the el the ethereum that was in the liquidity right and now you have a new total so again you do that division the the ethereum divided by the soku you get the price usd 0.0217 per soku okay and this is how you do it if you guys want to do the math you guys can go back and enter in any number you want and just use this calculation and it will tell you exactly what 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 it will take to get us to a certain point okay um so here 60 eth right did the same calculation everything brought up over five cents right which is over our all-time high as of since we launched right uh, and the, and these ones in between we're just the ether scan showing these numbers. So you don't think I'm just making them up, right? <sighs> don't where I got these numbers from. Here, uh, 100 ETH, which was roughly $165,000, brought us to 12 cents. Okay. 150 ETH brought us to 24 cents. Let's see if I went farther or not. Um, what did they buy at before the price went to 24 cents? Oh, here. And this is saying um, before we do that calculation that I did, right? Uh, 150 ETH times 1650. They bought this many Soku. So if you just do that math, 150 ETH divided by. Uh, uh, you know, $247,000, 247K, right? Um, divided by 8 point, almost 2 million Soku, they bought for 3 cents. The very next transaction was 24 cents. So wow. when, when you, you see, that's, you see the number on there? crazy, yeah, yeah. And that's why I try to explain to people, like these numbers, like once you understand this, you understand the power. You understand what we built. You understand what's about to come. Yeah. It's so very, very simple. On the chart, it would show that, but the next transaction, it would jump to 24 cents. Exactly. 
because here we were at three cents, but now let's go back, right? Because because here you can see um, there was nine million so nine million soko in there, right? You can go right here. You see that nine million soko? But they just bought. So now after that, there's only about a million left in here, right? Because there was uh, nine million soku and they just bought eight million. So now there's roughly one million soku left in, right? One point one seven million soku for uh, two hundred eighty-two thousand dollars worth of uh, Ethereum. So essentially, if you if you were to put in, you know, a simulation like, oh, what would happen to the price if I bought? Um, you know, a hundred thousand bucks worth of Soku, that is not going to yield the same result as ten ten thousand dollar buys, right? If I'm understanding correctly, ten ten thousand dollar buys would increase the price a lot more than a single hundred thousand dollar buy. Is that correct? Um, I can't say for sure, okay? And, and, and I just don't like talking on my ass. I, I, I won't say unless I'm 100% sure. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Um, it would make sense that if Ethereum was staying at the same price. No, no, because then the price would go up off of the yeah, I'm not. I'm not 100% I'm not, I'm not sure, to be honest. Well, it also depends how how if people are adding LP during you know between those transactions, it's gonna that's the other variable. It's gonna depend on how much liquidity is in the pool. If people are buying, then there's less Soku in the LP. Um, but if people are also adding, then that's 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 another variable. So I get that you can't say for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, but 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 e e even just based off the premise, like like as we're explaining right here, right. Like, like this buy was for now it was a lot of money, right? It was 150k, it was a small, small bit of money, right? But, um, you know, it went from three cents to 24 cents on that next transaction. So, if you did, uh, if you did break it down into 10, um, I'm not sure to be honest where it would be at at the end because I've, I've just never compared those two and never done those two myself to really be able to say, and it's really tough because. To even test that, you'd have to make sure that nobody else was doing anything at the same time. So it would be right. a really tough concept to even test. Yeah. Um, so I, I just can't say for sure. Um, yeah. But at, at this method, method, it, it, it makes sense to to just buy, right? Not to buy at with at a whole bunch because you can see that if you just buy, you're buying them at three cents, right? And then the very next one is twenty four cents. So, right. Yeah. So for for yeah, obviously, if you're buying, it makes sense to buy it in a chunk. I'm just I'm just thinking like, as transactions come in, um, you could see the price increase more than if you just try to estimate. If you try to to plug in one single buy into this, it's going to be different when it's multiple buyers buying in buying chunks than one hundred percent one buyer buying one big chunk. One hundred percent. And there's going to be a lot more trades. Just because we're now the currency of the marketplace. Yeah, and, and and one other thing that people don't realize too, um, that's a major, a major uh, thing for the NFT marketplace, is that if someone lists uh, an NFT for Ethereum, people can bid in Ethereum or Soku, right? So if someone was to bid in Soku. At the time, that was an equal value of roughly what the other bids were for in Ethereum. But then Soku goes up in value. If Soku goes up in value, right? Then that person would then be able to say, "Okay, well, shoot, I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna execute this bid now, right? Because now this Soku is worth more than the Ethereum bid." Well, okay. yeah, and 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 you're going to be incentivizing people to 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 use Soku over Ethereum too, and um, so and we obviously don't don't can't say how just yet, but but there will, as far as I understand, be some incentives, and also some uh, types of NFTs that um, are unique and really original that uh, people haven't really seen 
seen much of before. And that's another thing that will be a surprise. Yeah, yeah there's a bunch coming. Like pretty much what we built, we, we, we just built like a perfect system. Um, like, like we just, we just, you know, we, we, we face a lot of struggle, you know, um, um, we, we, we face, I'm, I'm going to stop sharing. Did anybody want us to go over any of these numbers again or, or show any of the clips again? Do I have any questions? I think no. we're good. I mean, a lot of people are going to be watching this recorded and, uh, and I'm sure some people will have follow up questions when they watch it because there were a lot more people who wanted to see it, but doesn't work with their time zone and who asked for it to be recorded. So I'm sure we'll get the okay. questions later. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, well, the biggest thing is, is this like, um, we we've, we've tried everything. And, and I believe in my heart that we made the right decisions. Right. Um, we did some of that, that um, crypto marketing, right? Hiring the Twitter influencers and doing a little bit of this, doing a little bit of that, right? That other groups do. Um, some of these things we got were, were referred to us from other groups that, that it worked for them. We tried some of that, worked for certain things. Uh, but, but we figured, you know, why don't we like not mess around and why don't we go to the best digital marketing company in the world, right? That's what we did. Um, we happened to go to that company roughly right around the same time that FTX went to that company. And FTX had a much larger budget. They had a budget of $300 million a year. And they said that, um, at first they were saying it wasn't gonna be a conflict of interest, right? Then after they find nice vape work, they said uh, it actually is a conflict of interest because they want exclusivity because they spent this much money, right? And Neil Patel pretty much became a, a part-time CMO for them, okay? Uh, and this is one of the most respected people in um, SEO and digital marketing, right? Um, so they made the right move too. They just made some other dumb moves, but uh, they definitely made the right move with that um, for the most part. The problem was that this company didn't have a lot of experience marketing this industry. And this industry is very different. I had a printing and marketing company for four and a half years. I'm pretty good at marketing certain companies, right? There's a lot of companies that I've helped out a lot. With this industry, it's been very tough. I've had to learn how to do things a lot different. We can't market on any platform. We can't market on Facebook. We can't market on Instagram, Twitter, Google AdWords, any other ad platform. Like we're very, very, very extremely limited. Okay. Um, the, the, the type of people, um, and I'm not saying anything negative, but the type of people that invest in this are different than, you know, um, dog owners, right? Dog owners, uh, you, you know, people that own dogs, they love their pets, right? They'll, they'll, they'll spend a lot of money on their pets, make them happy. Um, you, 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 you appeal to them this way, right? Um, crypto world is a lot different. A lot of people, um, unfortunately I think a lot of people are just here for trying to make a real quick buck, right? Um, that, that, that then you got the more solid investors. I think because of the the, the length of time that it took us to develop, I think we have a, a much more mature group than most. And, and I appreciate you guys. Um, probably don't say that much. I, I, I don't talk in the group that much. And I get a little bit frustrated, to be honest, um, with the group sometimes because, you know, we work our butts off. I, I don't work another job. I, I'm, I'm not doing construction all day and then coming to do this part time, right? Like this is why I do every day, seven days a week from the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep. So I get a little bit frustrated when people are saying, yo, you should do this and you should do that. Like we haven't thought of just about anything, everything, right? Now there are some, some ideas that you guys come come up with and bring to, to the table. I'm like, oh, that's actually a pretty good idea. Uh, if we had extra resources, we probably might actually do it. But, you know, we struggle too. We're, we're a company. The amount of money that we spend every month is astronomical. You know, if you guys looked at our books, you'd be blown away. You'd be like, oh shit, how do you even do this? We've been working magic. We've been getting shit done. And and it's been tough, right? But, but you know, I, I live by an old saying that says, uh, I never said it'd be easy, I said it'd be worth it. And that's why I just keep pushing, because I understand it's not gonna be easy. I just understand that 
the effort and, and, and the, the, the things that we do to sacrifice and, and get this job done, it's going to be worth it and it's going to pay off in the end. Right. And I think um, a lot of our investors understand that too. You know, um, no one came and made quick, easy money with us, unfortunately. I would like if everyone could have done that. You know, how, how much would I have loved if everyone could have just came and made a million dollars real fast and just, you know, went and lived a great life. Cool. I'm happy with that. I would love to do that. Um, unfortunately, I can't. Like, I can't snap my fingers. I can't. I can't get rich like this either. You know, things take time. We, we have to. We have to invest a lot of time, a lot of energy. We have to learn. We have. We've done a ton of learning. I've learned a, a, a tremendous amount over the last two years. A tremendous amount. Um, tremendous. Even about things I thought I knew really well. Uh, so that's that, that's just the way things are. But um, I appreciate the people that, that are here because. I think you guys have understood that that you know i can't say technically you know whether this is a good investment or not but i think i believe it is and i think most of you guys believe it is um and i appreciate I the people, people here are, are are looking for that sustained long-term growth and and anybody who was you know just looking to to flip a quick buck uh, isn't isn't around. So yeah, we have a group of people who get clean themselves out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who get it, you know, and um, and and who yeah, who aren't just just looking for a a, a pump and a dump, but who are looking for for real long term value. And um, and that circles back to what we were talking about with um, you know potentially a, a smart strategy in regard to providing liquidity and uh, um, and taking profits incrementally while supporting the price as the price in as the value increases, uh, pr presumably. Yeah. Oh, and, 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 and just so you guys understand, like, like we just showed you showed you um, an example um, with what was it 150 ETH valued at 250 K now. The amount of liquidity that we had at the time is different than what we have now. I don't know exactly what it was then or exactly what it is now. I'm not going to jump into that right now. Pretty close. Okay. Nothing, nothing too off. Right. Uh, but that was what roughly 250 K. Right. Um, we have a ton of NFTs that we're going to be selling for much more than 250 K. You saw what 250 K did to the price. Just, just throwing this information out there, right? I'm not saying still, I'm not saying that Soko is going to go up in value. I'm just saying that you saw what that did and we're going to be selling a lot more NFTs or, or we're going to be selling a lot more. We're going to be selling NFTs worth a lot more than 250K. Okay. Um, we've actually had to dumb down our first sale um, for Kristen because if we sell for too much, it's going to affect the price too much. So these are not real numbers, but let's just say that we're selling her NFTs for $7, right? $7. You want to see that? I hate these markers. I don't know if you have a but it was trying to run out too. You want to see that? $7, right? So... Um, let's say, for instance, we were going to sell 10,000, right? That would be $70,000, right? So, um, is someone sleeping on here? <laughs> so we put somebody to sleep. We need to mute, start. mute somebody's mic. I'm going to mute everybody. Oh, okay, mute everybody. Uh, sorry, you guys, put you asleep. Uh, so, let, let's just say, uh, you know, we're going to do $70,000 worth of, of uh, or, 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 let's keep it simple, right? Let's say 250 Right, because we know what 250 does. 250 takes us from 0 0.000, or no, 0 0.002 to 0.24, right? 
Work with it. What, what, what's what's point twenty four divided by point zero zero two? Uh, let's see. Point two four divided by point zero zero two is one hundred twenty. So that's 120x, right? From 0.002 to 24, that's 120x, right? So if we sold one set of NFTs for $250,000 worth of, of Ethereum or, or Soku, right? Um, then that would bring the price up 120x. So let's say that first NFT that sold was for $7. By the time the last one sold, it would be 120 times seven, which would be 700, $840, right? That's, that's pretty steep, right? Because how is the first person gonna buy it and they're buying at seven and the last person buying at 840, right? If people understood, they'd be selling shit for Soku right now because it would incentivize people to buy sooner than later, right? Basic common sense and math. Okay? Right, and these these influencers have followers who uh, I mean, who they already have an audience. They already have people who 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 love them and everything they do, and. And a lot of them are, are not necessarily crypto people yet, but who are going to be able to buy with like a debit card and, uh, and who are, it's going to bring them into the crypto world. So yep. that's a, that's a smart way to not just try to grab a piece of the existing pie, but to make the pie bigger. 100%. And, 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 and they're not just buying an NFT. They're, 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 they're pretty much getting to join a club, right? Um, we're gonna we're gonna have events. We're gonna have events in in Vegas. We're gonna have events in Florida. We're gonna have events in different places around the country. Maybe the world. I'm not gonna say the world yet, but maybe definitely around the country. We've already have a few places lined up and planned out. Um, but when when these people buy an NFT, depending on which level of NFT they buy, um, they'll either be guaranteed a place in our our parties or or whatever you want to call them events um or or they pretty much get like a raffle and the, the nft works as a raffle ticket for every time we do a drawing okay so so there is a huge incentive for these people to come do it so they can come and hang out with you know 20 30 40 beautiful women doing a fun event so uh some of these nfts will be selling for a lot of money i'm not going to tell you guys the price of right now but they're going to be selling for a lot of money some individual NFTs will cost a lot, and then some will be on the lower side. Okay. But like I'm explaining, just because our liquidity is low and we don't want to, we don't want to spike the price so fast, right? Because it's going to hurt the NFT buyers, right? Um, we have to sell for a lower amount. So if you understand that, that we have to sell for a lower amount just to not spike the price so much. Like it kind of explains itself, right? It's all about the sustained growth and it has to be at a sustainable pace. Yeah. But I think our sustainable pace is probably going to be nice, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> just my opinion. <laughs> Not financial advice, just my opinion. Right. We can't say that, but we're all here because we we believe in it. <laughs> yeah. So so those are the numbers, man. We, we, we showed you the numbers, we showed you liquidity we showed you how it works we showed you why me personally i would rather provide liquidity as the price is going up versus sell against the, the amm right if you sell on an order book it's different if you sell on an order book it doesn't affect the price as much okay so if people want to sell directly um i'm not going to tell you where to sell but i'm going to say it hurts the price less if you sell on an order book, okay? Versus the AMM, okay? So just throwing that out there too, maybe probably should make sure we include that. Um, so, but if you provide liquidity, again, as, as people are buying and people are gonna keep buying to buy these NFTs, because we got a lot coming, um, then 
the price will go up every time people buy Soku because they're buying your Soku at a higher price every time, right? So that's it. That's it in a nutshell. So, uh, anybody got any questions? Let me unmute people. Uh, I guess I could just ask to unmute. Does anybody have any questions? And you got Peter and Igor. All right. Well, we'll post the recording, and uh, if people have any questions, they can they can post it in the group. Um, we're going on about an hour and forty minutes here. We should probably wrap it up. I'm guessing. Oh, well. I'm both fast, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I realize it's been that long. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, you anything, Peter. Peter? thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate you being Thanks. here. Good night. All right. Good night, you guys.